Hello, my name is Myung Jin I'm a researcher in Korea University. Uh, this is part of my personal research project for my PhD thesis in University of Cambridge. So I'm going to present the Framer. Uh, framer is efficient for object metadata, metadata management. I'm going to show you how to use Framer to memory safety. Okay, let's define the memory safety informally. Memory safety is a property that program execution is me uh, memory error free. So memory error free, uh, memory errors include buffer overflows or dangly pointers or no pointer, uh, no pointer the references. Memory safety is classified into two categories, special memory safety and temporal memory safety. Today I'm going to focus on the special memory safety Special memory safety is to find the memory error a point if the pointer is within, within the, um, between the base address and its limit. This is very simple. But to detect the memory error, do we have to store all, we, we have to store the metadata for each object. So this is why memory safety is not very expensive. Also, basically we have to insert the runtime checks for every memory access unless it's proven safe at stacked time. So memory safety enforcements suffered from runtime overheads mainly because of increase of dynamic instruction count and the cache misses caused by metadata management. So this, uh, let's talk about the existing metadata storage mechanism. The first one is a fat pointer. It's really fast. It's probably the fastest one but it suffered from the compatibility because it changes the pointer representation. So it suffered from the memory layout change. Also, it, the metadata can be overwritten by the unsafe typecast. Other approaches are using disjoint metadata table. It has a better compatibility, it's a safer, but it's more expensive. So some approaches trade off space or complete checking or precise checking or a good compatibility for runtime for uh, performance, for the better performance. So today I'm going to present the framer. The two goals, the two big goals of a framer is to keep the locality of references as high as, as, high as possible. So we force on each, we force each object carries its own metadata and we streamlined metadata lookup. There is no traverse in the data structure. We just calculate, we just calculate the address of metadata only using point of value. So we have a good, and we have also good compatibility because we, we don't have internal memory layout change or superfluous padding. But a framers header, framers metadata can hold any kind of per object information so it can be applied to type safety, thread safety, and garbage collection. This is overall architecture of a framer. We take a source code and we, we, we just follow the traditional LLVM based approaches. It's fully software based. And also, framer is implemented as a LLVM LTO passes for the, for the whole program analysis. This is the idea. First of all, for the, higher, for the higher locality of a reference, we attach a header to each object, not pointer. And we use tag pointer. We encode some information in the spare 16 bits and only using the value of the tag and the pointer value and we can calculate, we can calculate the address of a header. This is the whole idea. To do that, we introduce frame. Frame is defined as a memory block who, uh, that is two to n size and aligned by its size. So using this feature, we, we calculate the address. We, for each object, we get the object the ripper frame, which is, that is defined as a frame, smallest frame, having the object, having the object, and inside, uh, having the object, and it's also aligned by 2 to n, and the 2 to, and its size is 2 to n. So there exists only one ripper frame for each object. So we use this information. 
Now we have a tag pointer. The basic idea is to find the base address of each object's wrapper frame, and then we add the offset. The wrapper, the offset, each object the wrapper frame doesn't change over time. It's determined at memory allocation, so it does move. So we use that as a reference point, and we given an inbound pointer and tag, and we just get the we get the base address of object wrapper frame by zeroing the n least significant bits of pointer. It's a simple. I'm not going to go into too much detail. And we add just offset, and then we get the we get the address of header. To, to make the size of offset fixed, we introduce a slot. Slot is defined as a 2 to 15 size frame. frame. We set the size of slot to 2 to 15 so that the offset can be fit in the spare bits. We, uh, the one bit is taken for other purpose. I'm going to explain later. Now we, we, can derive, we can derive the address of metadata in any cases, but there are some cases that offset can't be used. For example, okay, this object is a sitting across the two slots. Then each the point one and the point two can, can be lead to two different slots. So we use a supplementary table only for these cases. Mm, to create, uh, to use a supplementary, supplementary table, we use a shadow space. Give you, creating one mirror copy of application memory is a waste of space. So, so many existing methodologies have their own mapping from application memory to compact shadow memory. We, ha we have our own mapping system too. Metadata is a stored in the shadow memory, and we just calculate the address of metadata only use m value. It's the same for the header. So for the small frame, a small object, we take offset in the tag pointer b, but in this case, we just take only n value for the object whose size is, whose wrapper frame size is 2 to n. That is the whole information that we need. It's getting complicated. So we create one contiguous array for one program, and each entry is mapped to 2 to 16 frame. It's only one entry to, for each 2 to 16 frame, and each entry has subarrays, but the number of elements in each subarray vary so from 1 to 48. I think I can reduce to 32 or something, but this is current implementation. So each element of subarray sub -array is mapped to the object, the problematic object. We have a proof. So once given inbound pointer with the number, uh, the size of a wrapper frame size tagged in the tag pointer, we can calculate, we, we just calculate the, the address of entry. So, and that entry has the metadata. So, there is no traverse in the data, in data structure, there's no lookup. We just calculate the address in any cases. So, in, in this case, they might, the entry might be empty or it may be taken. So Entry is taken only when the object, correspondent object is taken, is allocated. So in some cases, we can catch dangling pointers. Mm. Tracking, as approaches tracking object have uh, suffered from the first negative problems. So for example, consider the pointer B and C. B can be recognized as an out of bound, but in the case of C, it's out of bound, but it's considered as inbound because it's, it is in, within the valid range of another object. This is a well-known first negative problem of uh, object bounds based approaches. So to, 
to skip that, uh, so if we just um, perform the runtime checks at the Parisian arithmetic, then it may lead to the first negative problems because of the, of by one byte. So what can we do? Should we check bounds at the point of arithmetic and the memory read and write that is too much work and it is going to be more expensive? So to avoid that, some approaches paired off by one byte to avoid runtime checks and point of mem and to checks at memory accesses, or another one can mark out of bounds point at point of arithmetic and then this keeps runtime checks at runtime checks at memory accesses. But in the case of Framer, we don't pad. We just, we just don't do anything because we can just pad imaginary bytes when we determine object wrapper frame, then still we can, because even if it's out of bounds, it's still within the wrapper frame, so we can just derive the address, we can derive the address of the base, base address of the wrapper frame and then we can get the, we can get the location of the head. So we don't do anything at point of arithmetic. Framer doesn't damage the compatibility unlike the fair pointers. Fair pointers suffer from the compatibility problem because of the internal layout, internal memory layout. But uh, we just attach a header outside, at the, in the front of the object, it doesn't damage the compatibility. Also, when, we, when the tagged pointer is passed to uninstrumented the models that we just strip off the tag, tag the, when it's passed to pre -com, and when passed as an argument in, in the function in, in uninstrumented module. This framework requires a quite large work of a program transformation. We have to replace all the object with a padded one, and also we have to update and replace the uses of a uses of a pointer with a tagged pointer, and we, we can skip the in-frame check. So it was a large work, it's fully software-based. We perform some optimization, standard optimization. We use LVM, we use optimization, provided LVM. Also, we have, have our own optimization classes. But we have a penalty for using tagged pointers because if one memory access is proven safe at static time, we can just skip it if, if we don't use a tag pointer. But if, if we use a tag pointer, we have to strip off. So it, may, it does increase the dynamic instruction count. So I measured, I forgot the days, but I think it's overhead it was five or 10%. Maybe it's not that big, but for high performance system or if it program is too big, it's a problem. So we can, we can prove one object, all the access to the object is safe, then we can just skip the tracking the object and then we don't need to take anything. The advantage of Framer is we remove, we streamlined the metadata lookup in the, data, in the data structure fully. And after experiment, I noticed the cache miss data. Cache miss is very low and stable. For example, L1 D cache L1 D cache misses per 1,000 instruction is much lower than the baseline. It's, most of them are below the 0 0.5. And, and the, unlike other sanitizers or other baggy bounds, so we have very low space overhead, mostly is 1.2. Normalized space overhead is 1.2. And we have a compact encoding of its address. The metadata doesn't need to store base address, we just store the size because the address, the base address of an object can be calculated. So, yeah, this was. So this question is, we are worried that we are going to lose the high locality of references for big size array. And, but experimental results show that it didn't, uh, it didn't affect them much. And also, like a fair pointer, Address metadata is neighboring with the user programs, user programs data, so it can be easily overwritten by the unsafe typecast. We have the same problem like the fair pointers. So it's a future work will be to guarantee the full type safety. And uh, I think I, 
I believe I can make more complete encoding for supplementary metadata table. And uh, we support most of the old runtime overhead was quite proportional to dynamic instruction count. So we, can, we should reduce dynamic instruction count using static analysis or formal methods. Thank you. This is the whole. Oh. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are there any questions for the speaker at this point? Jonathan Woodruff, Cambridge University. <clears throat> where, two questions, where does your N come from? It looked like it wasn't in the tag, so how do you know the magnitude of the containing object? And second of all, why doesn't your offset scale with N? Uh, sorry? Okay. Where mm. does N come from? Uh, where does the N come from? This, when the object is allocated, we get the wrapper frame size, the smallest wrapper frame whose size is 2 to n, and the 2 to n, it is fixed. I need to, at once the allocation is allocated, I need a fixed location. That's so why how do you find out, is n encoded in the pointer some, somehow? It's we encode n value in the pointer. Okay, I just saw an offset and a tag in the pointer, so I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's offset, it's for the big frames. If the object is sitting across the two slots, we tag n value, with the size of the wrapper frame, and for the smaller one, if it fits in those slots, then we just take offset. So, and we presume, we presume, okay, and this, the flag indicates, okay, if flag is zero, this is N, if it is one, then this is offset. It seems like if you had N and offset, and your offset scaled with N, you wouldn't need the shadow space. But anyway, something to think about. <laughs> okay. Well, we can Thanks, discuss Jonathan. the flag. We have time for one more question. Here. Okay. Uh, my question was that uh, your technique relies on the compiler, right? Yes, yes, so fully compiler based, yes. Uh, like writes assembly using ASM directly. No, no. Uh, for some optimization on the source code, I used that one, but uh, for the program transformation, it's fully LFM based, but we insert the runtime checks, so the, the memory bounds are checked at runtime. So if somebody wrote, assemb uh, wrote assembly code by themselves? Sorry? If somebody wrote assembly code. Yeah. Ah, it's, okay, you are talking about the binary rewriting for program transformation, right? No, no, no. no? The one. Somebody wrote, instead of writing in C and using LLVM, they use assembly code. The future work. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. I thank the speaker again. Thank you.